capped honey. It's amazing. Okay, now we're going to add the honey to the, to the mix. Hi, my name is Amor Rodriguez and this is Amor Rodriguez Survival. Welcome to my channel. Okay, I'm back at the bee yard. Today it's time to harvest the honey. We've been patiently waiting, helping out the bees throughout the springtime. I just began with this process and it's a big eye-opener in the life of the pollinators of this planet, reading about them, understanding their life cycles and how much they help us as humans. So right now it's part of the reward is to come back and take a little bit of the excess honey they have. We don't want to take too much honey because that's their food. The, the pollen that they collect and the honey that they are harvesting and making, it's what they eat during the winter. And if you take too much of that, then you run into some problems. You start getting them, uh, um, your colony could collapse because you have uh, no food in the hive. And then you're like, oh, they have no food, they have no honey, you start feeding them sugar. So then you're buying sugar, which is a practice that a lot of people do to maintain their hives. But I'd rather leave them with plenty of honey, just take a little bit, because I'm just trying to understand our relationship. It's a symbiotic relationship with the bees where they provide me with some honey and I try to contribute with a good environment for them to actually do their job to collect nectar, pollen, bring it to the hive, do the honeycomb, turn this into liquid gold. Really amazing process. Really glad to be dipping my toes into it. Um, so this is the day, summertime. It's time to harvest the honey of these hives. Okay, I've been collecting some tinder. You can get this from the inner bark of a bunch of trees. Light this one up. Once this one gets a little going, it's doing really good. Let's see if the honey supper is anything. Let's uh, smoke him. Usually, you want to have all these weeds not in the front or the back or around, so the bees don't have a lot of, uh, they need some space. The people that have suggested give me advice. After I put my first uh, beekeeping video out, they suggested I take a couple of frames out and then I start moving the frames around, the way I can have space and time to, to do this. We have without this being so tight in there. This is full of honey. The whole thing, all those frames are capped honey. That's amazing. So let's, uh, let's get this one out. You can tell I'm a new beekeeper and like, with slower movement, I see my friend Ross work. Look at that, capped honey. Perfect, perfect. Beautiful, beautiful capped honey on there. Well, this one has brood, but look at this side. Yummy. Look at that one in there. Yum. Look at that beautiful frame of honey. It's really awesome. It's beautiful. Look at that one. That's awesome. Capped honey. It's amazing. Have a little brush in here. I think this is to brush the bees off. It came with a kit. <laughs> so we're gonna take three frames out of this hive, I think. And then like that. But then now the frame is clean. No bees. 
and it's just full of honey and that's what we want just get this frame full of honey we put it in one of these boxes to transport it Let's check this one. Yeah, a little bit in there. Oh no, yeah, I haven't taken the frame out like you guys suggested, but that's... It looks pretty good. Okay, let's harvest some of the honey. We brought a little ways away from the from the hives. There's still a couple of bees in here, but man, you know, hard to get them out of there. So we have a spinner. Uh, this spinner, you can use it by hand. Maybe you can attach a drill to it and don't have to work cranking it. There are also the other types of spinners. You can also, if you don't have a spinner, you can also do it by hand squeeze the honey out of the out of the wax and then you can render the wax to make candles so I use it to finish my bows I mix it with deer tallow or any other animal fat that I have harvested and I put that as a finish on my wooden tools and weapons but this is the inside of the spinner basically there is it just goes around this bucket and spins the honey out of it. This is for the bigger frames. So one frame goes in here and one goes in here. So two frames at a time. Let's start the process, I guess. Let's harvest some of the honey. So this is one way to do this with this spinner. Um, it's a big hassle to hold it in place. The parts come off, the paint chips. If we, we've been, we did this last year and now we're trying to figure out how to do it. Some people put new legs on it. Some people put drills in it. So you can just press a cordless drill and spin your honey. So I might need the help of some of those really high level bushcraft mentalities like Sean with the wild and helped me figure out how I can make a, some sort of honey wagon in here and make this process a little more um, streamlined, <laughs> we'll see. But now we have, uh, we started collecting the honey. These beautiful jars of honey are just, that's what we work so hard for right here. Okay, so now it's the end of the day and I've been working really hard trying to get the honey out. I'm still spinning a little bit out. I got a couple more jars that I need to fill. But I'll do that for the last bit of light we have left. But this is what we work so hard for right here. The honeycomb. It's the best. Wow, the spring honey. We're going to go keep harvesting the honey and we go from there. We'll take it to the house. Okay, I made it back from uh, harvesting bees. Harvesting. <laughs> so tired from that trip. That was wonky uh, honey extractor. I had to, and I had to leave like a one in the morning, long drive home. Anyways, I'm back from harvesting honey. 
I am uh, still processing. Check this out. Yeah, some of the frames I still have to uh, work on the honey supers. The deep frames I already got them out. I have uh, some that I have to still work on, but beautiful raw honey. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. And now that I have some, I can put some in the meat because when I made it, I didn't have enough. I just had uh, the quarter and a half and I know it was stalling a little bit. It's all good, it smells good, tastes good, looks good. Now that I have it, I can put some in there. So I heated up this water uh, just to, with the honey, just to kill the any foreign yeast that might have gotten in there. No to cook it either, because I still want all the goodies of the honey. Uh, so it's still raw. So one of the things that I want to show you that you can do if you have the ingredients, it's not that many ingredients, it's only three. To make raw chocolate is not that difficult. You need three ingredients. One of them is ca cacao butter, cacao powder or cacao paste. And a sweetener, I'm going to use local raw honey from the hives. And it's a survival food that stores really well. It's awesome to have it, it's delicious. And I feel like it's even better if you if it comes from your hives. I, I've been doing it for a while, so I do have products in bulk, like the cacao, but you can add anything you want to this survival food. You can add nuts. Um, I think I'm going to add some lion's mane mushrooms to mine. Oh yeah, we're doing it on a double bath. So that's water, a container. It's not directly on the fire, it's a container on top of a water. We're heating the water and the steam, the vapor from the water will heat this up slowly. Uh, we'll be using mold for the chocolate once it's all done. And I need a thermometer. With the chocolate, the way you heat it up and down and then heat it back up again, the way it has the good consistency. Uh, snaps well and it has the really good uh, consistency of true chocolate. So we will try to do that. Um, if you don't have all of these tools, it'll be a little harder, especially the thermometer. And you cannot substitute the, like, the cacao butter or the cacao powder. The sweetener, you can do any sweetener you want. A liquid sweetener like the local honey is probably better than a sugar because then it, it's raw chocolate that we're making. We're not heating it back up so the sugar doesn't dissolve like that. So, but, and I did measure this, uh, 100 grams of butter, 50 grams of powder, but 70 milliliters of honey. I'll heat the water. And let's see if we can make this survival food. First the, the butter. Yeah, first the cacao butter. I'm gonna chop it up. Okay, so you want to do this at room temperature and you want to do uh, everything dry and you want to be careful with the, the heat not to overheat it not to cook it not to burn it i'm doing raw chocolate so i'm trying to keep it keep it at low temperature and uh, you have to temper it right so you have to take it to the melting point that you want then bring it down, then heat it back up a little bit again. So it's a double bath, so it's just water down there. Was it touching? I didn't think it was. Yep. So let me put there. 
Like the cow water. It's good stuff to have. You can make salves, uh, beauty products, or creams, or a bunch of stuff. It's really good stuff to have. And if you have a cacao paste, you'll have to chop it up and mix it all together there. And that's the chocolate. Okay, starting to melt. Starting to turn into chocolate. Okay. Yeah. As a food, if you choose food as one of your 10 items for the TV show alone on History Channel, chocolate is one of the options as well as salt. There is another ration salt, sugar, and salt, um, salt, sugar, and rice. But it's a really smart idea to take chocolate. You got it out of there. Okay, now we're going to add the honey to the to the mix. But after you have taken it up to temperature, then you start cooling it down. And then you can add your ingredients, whatever you are adding to your chocolate. And start mixing it. So here you want to mix it really, really well. Mix all your ingredients. Put it into there. And we'll bring it back up to 88 degrees. Okay, we made the pour at 88 degrees and this should be uh, room temperature so it doesn't affect the chocolate and depending on the humidity and temperature of your house, you can probably just leave them outside and they're gonna dry and then get them out of the mold or you can stick them in the refrigerator to help you accelerate the process. But that's it. Late night chocolate making. They look pretty good. Mm. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. And the honey is really delicious. I think I can use less honey. Here paying a little homage to my ancestry by making chocolate from the honey I harvested, even better. Thank you guys for watching, see you at the next one. If you enjoy this content and support videos like this, check out my Patreon here. And my latest video here. Subscribe here. This content is brought to you by Fowler's Making Mischief Studios, you can check them out here.